Hey guys, what's up? It's Adam here from AM Music and today I want to have a quick look at a problem I came across whilst I was mixing a track for a client. It gave me some stems and the problem I was having was with some drums. There was a load of reverb on these drums and for me it was just a little bit too boomy. I kind of wanted to bring that reverb a bit more under control. So there's a few different approaches that you could try to achieve this. I mean, ideally you just go back to the client or if you recorded it, you re-record it in a smaller room. If if you don't have the option, here are three things you can use to reduce the reverb on a certain thing. And I'm going to look at drums, but you could do the same approach for any other instrument, vocals, etc. Let's jump in. Got Logic open here and I've got some drums, some boomy drums. I'm not going to play the whole track. I'm just going to use the little drum part for this demonstration. I know that this track is most likely going to be published by a sync library, so I don't want to expose any of the juicy elements from the track. So I'm literally just going to use the drum part. Okay, so here is the drums I've got. And hopefully you can hear there's quite a lot of reverb on them. They're not particularly dry. And in the context of the mix, they're just adding a little bit too much muddiness. So I'm going to try and rein that back in a little bit. And I went through a few different approaches here. So this is what I've got on already. And then this is where I tried to get rid of some of the reverb. So, so the first approach is using a gate and you can hear what that sounded like. So you can hear that it's kind of stuttering it a little bit. And in solo, it doesn't sound too good, but you don't really notice it in the context of the overall mix. The gate works by setting the threshold. There, it's only just letting the very loudest stuff through. There, it's letting everything through. So you probably want to adjust it to where it's just about on the border. somewhere like there and then you've got the ratio which is how much is going to be gated uh, you've got the range so you can set like whether it's going to cut out 50 decibels in this case or you can go even higher up to 100 and zero being the least this is fab filter pro g by the way you also can use a logic gate there is a noise gate in logic got the hold so it holds open a little while before it closes and i've got the release uh, up kind of around 100 milliseconds Uh, it's a bit smoother when the release is out like that. And I've got a knee here, so a knee is whether it, so you adjust that angle, so that's really hard. It's just gonna. When there's no knee, it's just a little bit harder. It's a bit more kind of on or off, but if you add that, it kind of smooths it, and you can see that. So say you ended up with something like that. It's really rained the drums in. So not bad. It's obviously a bit more staccato now. The playing styles change. It's a bit more like rather than kind of thing. So that's the first approach. So you can use the gate. Obviously you play around with these settings till you get it about right. And I feel it's kind of where I want it to be. Next I tried was the Enveloper, which is a Logic plugin, but this is just the same as using any sort of transient shaper. So this is more transient shaping. Um, so without it. Okay, so you can hear it's a bit more grainier. You can kind of hear there's some artifacts happening there. It's not as clean as the uh, Pro G was. Um, and this just works by, you're kind of enveloping the sound. You're putting a new ADSR or uh, like attack and release to the sound. So, so you can affect the kind of. So that's really pulling out that tail. And then the opposite would be. So you can do it with the gain and then also the time. So it 
So that's kind of eating into the sound now. And you can set the threshold over here. So this is it with the effect on. But I feel like that's not as effective as the gate was, to be honest. You can definitely hear a bit of graininess artifacts being created from that. And number three, so this is Isotope D Reverb. So this is a plugin especially made by Isotope for this purpose of getting rid of reverb. So. So you can learn the reverb tail. So I could just stick it on the end, hit learn, and then it would learn the reverb. Or you can kind of manually do it here. Um, so reduction. So that's choosing the amount. You can see the reduction happening there. Um, and what's cool about Isotope's D reverb is that you can choose different bands for it to operate in. So you can take out the low, the low mids, the high mids and the high, and you can solo each band. So I feel a lot of it is coming from the cymbals, that reverb, you're really hearing the washiness. And one other thing you need to pay attention to in this plugin is the tail length. So if I set it at one. So it's not quite right. So you kind of have to guess the length roughly. And I reckon this is a four second reverb roughly. And you can smooth out the artifacts as well. So this one I think is the most natural sounding reverb removal out of the three. So there's three ways that you can take reverb out of a drum sound or vocal sound, whatever you want it to be. And there is another way that you could try as well. So this way is a little bit more convoluted. So what you can do is use phase cancellation to do it. So if I duplicate the channel, right? So duplicated. And what I'm gonna do is add in a gain plugin. Um, just turn off the D reverb, solo them. Okay, so loud and reverberant, but now let's invert the phase of this second one. Because I've inverted the phase on the second one, we're getting 100% phase cancellation. But let's say we don't want to cancel the entire sound, we only want to cancel out the reverb. So what we can do is we can add a compressor onto the, the duplicate. So let's add in a compressor now. Let's just go for a logic bad boy. Compressor, stereo. So now, because we're just applying this to one of them, we can let cert, we can let some of the sound through. Let me show you. So we're kind of using this compressor as a gate, really. By compressing the audio file that is out of phase, we're just getting the delta coming through, which I think is pretty cool. And I find this hurts my brain a little bit, but if we just focus on the sound, we can try and let the perfect amount of sound through by adjusting, say, the attack, the release, the threshold and the ratio of the compressor. So now we're just getting the main hits through, come back a little bit. everything coming through. Let's slowly drag it back. And here the knee is going to be quite helpful as well. Super choppy. So now you've basically just got the samples. You've got very little reverb on there. Obviously it sounds very artificial and staccato, but if you back off of that knee a little bit.
So as I increase the release, more is getting through. That compressor is taking longer to go back to the original level, so it's allowing more of the original signal through. I mean, you could get even more advanced and slight side chaining. That kick is letting a lot of the sound through. So we could just add in a low pass, a high pass filter. Let's bypass. That's reasonably subtle. It's reduced the reverb a little bit, but it still sounds relatively smooth and natural. Whereas if you use like the enveloper, it can sound a little bit unnatural and that staccato choppy kind of sound. So here's another way you can do it basically. I mean, this is a lot of extra faff and you kind of have to think backwards because you're, you're inverted on the polarity. So you're kind of like kind of working against yourself. It hurts my brain anyway. If you've got the option, then I would just go for the isotope uh, D reverb. So yeah, there you have it. Four different ways, in fact, how to reduce reverb in a drum sound. I would go for the Isotope RX D reverb. I think that was probably my favorite. I thought the one utilizing phase cancellation sounded pretty good actually. I was pleasantly surprised. The gates would probably be number three for me. And uh, then Logic's Envelope probably came in last, but that's an old plugin, so I didn't try it with a more up-to-date transient shaper. Anyway, I hope this was useful. I hope it was interesting, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.